third final of Oza Cup 2015. Then, as we have Fujiki Bios, Osaka Jimasa, Mokoi Government, and we have Hiroki Quinton's Secret World Planet for opening up, and we have Geisha Boys something for closing up, and we have Washington University for closing up. And judges are Fumiko, Kazumi, Kenta, Hiroki, Manayo, Mayu, Yota, Kazumi, and me. And on the motion that assuming technology as a limited community, this has been included as competent in the round rooms, I'd like to call upon Prime Minister to your case. Hey, hey. Let me just go straight forward for what do we mean to the Assai government or as the community to begin with, as, as I as I opening proposition. We think as opening proposition, debate should be operated without the influence of factor other than the pure persuasiveness of the argument, or there's a conflict of the ideas for a phrase of presentation which does not necessarily include the other possible factors. What really mean by persuasiveness and other factors on our side or the house? We think Persuasiveness constitutes are followed on our side of the house or the pure constant combat of the ideas. For example, logic of the argument, argument based on premises, examples, rhetoric, which means word choice, which might include gesture, for example, and which means ideas and persuasive the way in which people present their own ideas and what they present ways in which they present the idea in order to persuade others. What do I really mean by other factors, for example? Race gender, voice, institution, personal hate, so-called authority, which may come from his or her name, and their voices, for example, and past glory, which constitutes so-called authority, in, which is, I think, quite a common phenomenon in the society. And we would like to utilize this technology when it is discovered, which can be applied to the debating community in all realms, including national tourney, international tourney, and even practices, for example. And ultimately, Ladies and gentlemen, we believe that debate is about a persuasion based on thoughts, ideas, ways of delivery. We think as long as other comes come to play, we think this unfair form of adjudication will exist and progress of the round really exists, which hinders, you know, thank you, um, the debate, uh, the ultimate goals we would we, we, we suggest as a debating community. As Prime Minister, as basics, I'm going to talk about two things. Firstly, I'm going to identify the problem and the status quo. Secondly, I'm going to talk about how this technology, the problem would be solved. My problem underlies in three ways. First, in terms of me speaking of national touring, for example, when we talk about, um, I have experience in this, in this particular touring and all other various touring in national touring, that debaters oftentimes take peer corner information, for example, to the kind of strong debater, even before maybe Yasufumi had elaborated you know, his argumentation. But you know, I was not taken at round one because the whole thought, Yasufumi was both great debater <laughs> or myself based on his maybe appearance or maybe the so-called authority but you know, I, by Yasufumi other than myself. That kind of prejudice really exists. And as, especially when we talk about, I, I have to confess my personal experience, by honest. Honestly, I have taken the point of information from Senpai, for example, Takesan, for example, when I, like, other than, you know, maybe opponent, like Uchiyama was on the opponent, Pakistan, so on and so forth, because I had already assumed before Uchiyama had progressed and delivered his idea, I was preconceived that Takesan was more great, therefore, I have taken the point of information from Take. I was taking a second. So we think the ability for individual debaters to fairly op in and present the idea was distorted but with this particular authority, appearance, gender, those sort of stuff. And we think establishing because debater would contribute and progress his or her ability of, to debate by having an expression to the idea. We think that's damaging when the other factor has contributed to negatively influence the particular people within the debating community. Speaking of judges, the initial gentleman is going to be elaborated after I take it's just not for me. But if you know opponent to Shemakun's argument is much stronger than Takesan's argument, then you will surely lose in the debate. It's your responsibility. That's not the problem about the decree existing bias at all. I don't so the point was that in terms of point of information, is that I at the way in which anyway, I preconceived that Takesan was better than that of Uchiyama. Consequently, I might lose because Uchiyama had presented his sort of good argument than the Takesan. That's another problem on our side or the For example, and in speaking of judges. 
judges might feel that because person maybe was over a speaker at the previous forum, yeah, for yeah. example, then he or she might hesitate to score a bit low. Yeah, this yeah. is particularly a problem when in which maybe senior or high, same graders might circumvent this problem, but speaking of juniors or young generation, for example, is going to be hesitant to speak uh, to score a bit lower, for example, because they fear that there is no look. Because, because I am not necessarily better than him or her, I have to speak, uh, like score more to, than I, I, have initiate, um, I might have as a first impression. Those sort of things. Why is that problem? In two ways. Firstly, it distorts the competition, obviously, by concentrating the high speaker score to the individual who has a have, have past glory. And yeah. second of all, we tell you, it goes against the principle of idea. What do we really mean by this? We think idea must be neutral before combating, ladies and gentlemen. Because, so my idea was more superior than that of maybe opponents, then that's an unfair form of conceiving of idea. Because idea has to be neutral before combating, and, be, and if with this kind of race, those sort of some, no thank you, affects the ways in which people conceive about the individual idea, that's damaging, and we would like to ban it. Otherwise, we prohibit those after factors to be influenced. Speaking of international tournament, we believe there's a, still a problem of racism still exists in international tournament. For example, uh, uh, WDC. I'm sorry that you know the, one of the best Japanese debaters has scored 60s by the very racist people. I, I, I know someone have posted in Facebook. I reckon. <laughs> 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 I'm going to rectify because, And also, um, my partner had experience at WDC, debater from very prestigious University of America. And she won that, but the, after the reaction from the particular Y University, oh she, I lost from Japanese girl, and she was very disappointed by those kind of racist remarks. What kind of problem we have is that, firstly, obviously, it distorts the competition. Secondly, it hinders the future participation of the debaters okay. to that particular international tourney. For example, and of that individual who are offended. Furthermore, we, based on that rumor, we think Japanese debating community is more likely to be hesitant to participate in WDC in order because of their fear of the racism. And also in practice, maybe, so I have to also confess about this, also, um, the way in which I positively evaluate Senpai and uh, Takisan versus Masasan. I also, I have to confirm it. When I was freshman, I also always prioritized Pakistan's argument something to boy authority of that because I can oppose that because I fear that. Just damage it. Why is it after this proposal will change? Obviously, we will remove those authority, race, gender, those sort of stuff to be um, to be influenced within the community. We can avoid the harm which is about presented in the status quo. This obviously because those harm I explained in my prime minister speech generates from the fact that people have a different um, the way in which race, gender, institution, and um, authority, those sort of things affect the way in which people the conceive their individuality, that's damaging. For the, for the sake of those problems to be circumvented and solved, the Prime Minister is exceedingly proud. Thank you. Thank you.
is debating itself. It's just debating. And looking at the grander scheme of things, it's public speaking. It's how you speak in public. It's how you use your hands, your arms, you know, flat, flat, that kind of thing, right? But it's also about your voice as well. The tone of your voice, the speed in which you speak, how fast you go, or how slow you go. How you tone down your voice in certain aspects of the argument, or how you like, show emotion. How you show you're really angry at something, that you need something to change. You think something is a serious matter that needs changing. Or you might want to take a much more funny approach, hilarious approach, and have a bit more of comedy for the end speech. What I'm getting at at the end of the day is it's all about personality. It's all about individual identity, and it's about how you want to express yourself in order to convey that argument to the judges, in order to convey that argument to the people listening, to the audience in this case. What is the best way to go? And that best way, there is no correct answer. Because the answer differs from who is speaking. But my way to convince you guys is different from how Shingo would convince you guys, and it's different from how Tomoya would convince you guys. Because we're all different individuals doing with the same action, and therefore the moment you create anonymity, right, you're taking away individuality, you're taking away that person's right to express himself, and that's something we think is detrimental when you consider the institution of debating, why we debate, and what debate is in the first place. So before moving on to a lot more about that, a couple of refutations to that side. Firstly, they talk about the problem being prejudice, POIs. Again, POIs, not taking POIs from a certain team. That's just a problem of tactics, of knowing you know, good strategy. If you, know, if you continue to do that, you probably won't win too many tournaments. So I don't think that's necessarily a reason to introduce anonymity in terms of judging as well. well. If you're really judging that badly, you probably won't get too good a score in the tournament. You probably won't be rated that much. And we think that the problem is to make sure we get better judges within the community. It's not to make sure no one knows who is speaking. Then he said, I, it's, everything's idea-based. But as I've already shown you, it's not about ideas. It's about ideas, but it's not just about ideas. It's about the conveying the message across to the audience. We don't think that ideas in itself win a debate. Moreover, in, in order to like, show this, not everything can be logically proven in the first place. Can anyone explain why killing someone is bad? Why is murder bad? You don't really have a good enough answer apart from saying, well, we're taking away another person's human right. But why is that bad, right? It goes on to the principal aspect of debating in itself, and that's something where emotion comes in as well. It's how you use your emotion, it's how you convey your message, word choices, voice tone, and all of that. So we don't necessarily think idea in itself wins tournaments. It only wins tournaments in American speed debating, which is very fast, lots of ideas, but very crappy manner. That is their side, what they want. We don't want that. We want parliamentary debating. And parliamentary debating is more about manner, your posture, your composure on the stage itself. But finally, they said less participation is going to happen in international tournaments, and that's problematic. We don't necessarily think so. Because the moment you take away individuality and your right to express yourself freely within a tournament in order to convey a certain message, what's the point of debating in the first place then for those individuals? I think that maybe, we think that under their side, you're rather going to lose people being involved in debating in the first place, and we think that's even more problematic. No, thank you. But moreover, why do we debate, right? This is the crux of this debate itself. Why do we debate in the first place? It's to make sure that we challenge preconceptions, we challenge perceptions, ideas that exist within society that we think is wrong, or to convey ideas of what we think is just, what we think should happen. Therefore, again, as I reiterate, if the problem is discrimination, the, I, the answer is to make sure we tackle that discrimination by making sure we change the idea that's entrusted within that certain individual who is a big racist, such as that guy from Oxford, who I still really, really hate. But moving on from that, right? You also need to understand that it's also about how to convince people and learning the techniques of convincing people, learning the techniques of communication in itself. And also, debating is an activity that you do through a phase in your life. It's not everything, it's not part of your, it's not like the end goal of your life itself. So most people debate, they take lots of like techniques from debate, and then they go on to use it in a social structure when they go out into society. That's only possible if you actually know what kind of tone is good for you in certain instances, what kind of voice is good, what kind of speed is good, and you get all of that, and you get the proper reaction based on your individual individuality in itself, right? We think that the moment you take all of that away, you go completely against the aim of people debating in the first place. Yeah. 
The idea as well as a logical argument which appeals to people's emotion is important, I agree. But why my appearance, race, institution, authority positively influence to those arguments? Why not? Why should it not? For example, because, I'm, and this is going to move on to my second phase of the argument itself. Because debaters, in uniquely in international circumstances, right? You're not only debating for yourself, you're also representing the community that you come from, the university that you're from, maybe the background that you're from, maybe the sexual orientation that you have. You're a part of that community, however small or however big, and now you're, seeing, you're being seen as coming from that communal background. Now, because you have that background, because you have that certain amount of, back, of area to back from, right? You, you have support coming towards you. For example, when you can see Belgrade, the EFL team, going into the main semis of Lords um, this year, right? Most of the EFL teams were like, oh wow, they are great, we should support them, because you have that communal factor as well. You have that cultural pride, not only based on one university, but based on regions in Asia as well. That's something that really brings motivation for people to go and debate even better. But at the end of the day, as I keep on saying, as a debater, I want to be heard with my own voice. I want to be heard with my own language. I don't want to be a robot, right, being talked over. I want my debating to be more than just simply words on a piece of paper. So why like voice tone or like why low, low voices or high voices is so 
like connected to a persuasion at the first place. There is no explanation from Yuki at all. And second response is actually even if like there is some connection between manners, manners, but institution or persuasion, why this status is so unfair and is so unfair that that we have to hide completely? Because the gender, for example, or institution you are you are in is totally it's kind of like luck. Like no matter how you you wish to enter, for example, ICU, some people cannot do so, and be, because some institution has do, has been dominant within the debating community, some institutions have difficulty to compete with kind of dominant is, institution in a fair manner. So in this specific speaker, like genders or appearance or institution is comparatively unfair criteria compared to the content or or pure logics of the debater. So we say our product is. More, uh, much better compared to their side of us because we can, uh, like we can introduce the fairest criteria, which is content of argument and logics. So, first about uh, why we, we as debaters, as debating community, this policy is consistent. About some point of information. You can see what choice and metrics do matter to convince people that alters the way in which judges interpret argumentation. Even though two argumentations are exactly the same in terms of logic, you differentiate inter impression and interpretation on your side of the house. That's contradictory to your case. You know? No, rhetoric is is different. The choice of one choice is different from the like, facial expression or tone voice voice tone at the first place. So there is not contradiction. So you see why we debate. So many people are in this room, we are all debaters. So we, we are complete even though there is some difficulty, we continue to debate. Why? So Mr. Speaker, we, we believe as of opening government, we, we debate in order to gain new perspective, in order to liberalize our, the, our ourselves from old fashioned idea, or we want to liberalize ourselves from like stereotypes or fixed idea of prejudice. Why is that so? Because me myself has some sort of feminist debate. Me myself liberalize my idea, and I'm empowered by debating about feminist feminist motion, right? So that, that is applicable into this context. Because in that product, adjudicators are not free from the binding binding influence of authority, for example, or institution or or names of debaters or top. This kind of this kind of criteria, as they have considered, is influential upon the adjudicators' curriculum. Why is this so harmful? Right? Because because adjudicators themselves um, cannot cannot control that kind of intervention of authority or the name of institution by themselves. No matter how they, these adjudicators in their paradigm try to avoid to be biased in a bad way, they cannot do so, for example. Let me uh, let me um, introduce the example example of myself. And uh, for example, I, I, I judge that, for example, the debaters of Kokstan, and because Kokstan has high high tendency to get anger when they <laughs> make like, I myself fear fear that kind of like they kind of scope to be scope and to be like they feel offended by himself. That kind of fear is uncontrol uncontrollable and I me myself can't like can fairly or rationally calculate the content of Kokstan's speech compared to other other debaters. That kind of inference is so like damaging because because the debate should be like if adjudicators want to be free from that kind of influence, but they cannot do so under their paradigm. We need to be what because we want to um, we, we hide that kind of information, we, we can create fairer judgment and fairer debating. So secondly about the discrimination. You told you like he he himself do not want to hide his identity even if he face he, he face racism at, at worst. But Mr. Speaker, as the fact people are not so strong as huge, like some, because like there is massive sexism or racism, there are many people who, who are offended by that kind of experience, that kind of traumatic experience that they cannot, they may, they may stop debating even after that kind of traumatic experience. So because no one is, uh, no, no, no. New Day is kind of except, exception, and many people are offended so much, and they have the harm, psychological harm in the society, in, in the current debating community. As a whole, we want to protect, protect that kind of harm from happening at the first place because there is discriminatory towards, towards these debaters, and also in order to um, 
fully uh, pursue that the, the aim of the Bailey Committee was not seen prior to the proposal. Mm -hmm. Feminism should be more discussed. 
that's more, that's more likely to achieve homicide with her husband, right? Because when women uh, lose the debate, even though she provides very strong arguments, then everyone in the audience room, everyone in the room can notice that something wrong is going on within the judges, within the debate circuit. We are able to expose that level of discrimination or existence of discrimination to the audience by exposing those things to the public. We can publicly, openly discuss those matters. When the EFL team, a Belgrade, went to the semi final, all the audience were astonished and influenced by the existence of those EFL speakers. Uh, you know, uh, winning or defeating other native English speaking team. Debater is debating, representing the community, representing the institutions that have ripple effect over the members of minority communities within the audience room. I will take those and go. Okay, so even if there's some possible programs which can be you know, inherited into the motions, why is that, that important and mutually exclusive on the side of the house? Compare what, what we are arguing that discrimination is happening inside the banking community. Yeah, or if discrimination is happening inside the debate community, the way in which we can highlight those problems is that we actually express every identity, right? If, you know, feminist, feminist uh, uh, arguments or feminist issues should be discussed in the debate circuit, that's more likely to occur that women are openly discriminated by judges after the tournament, Mr. Speaker. When the score ranking is disclosed, when the particular types of women get constantly get low score, the people can, are able to notice and highlight the existence of those problems. Therefore, we can galvanize the public discourse about discrimination even more on our side of the house, not the exclusivity of our approach. We need the final argumentation about what constitutes a persuasiveness of argumentation. Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen, nothing can be purely logically proven. Why people have rights? We don't really explain the reasons why human rights are important. Nothing is purely logically proven. That's exactly why we have moral high grounds. We take intuitive stance in order to persuade judges, in order to persuade audits. That was conceded by the previous speaker. She explicitly said the ways in which you choose words, ways in which you use rhetorics, overly influence the ways in which judges interpret or understand or perceive the contents of argumentations. Even though two teams have exactly the same contents of argumentation, how you express those argumentations, how you logically or emotionally, intuitively deliver or convey argumentation does matter to scoring, Mr. Speaker, Madam Speaker, ladies and gentlemen. Thereby, as long as there is no uh, fundamental universal form of logic or uh, the persuasiveness, we are able to use our characterization, the tone of the voice, the gestures, or whatever necessary, whatever effective, not up to debate us, not the up to the you know, anonymity system or whatever else. Thereby, we are happy to oppose. Thank you.